Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a 71-year-old gentleman who fell one month ago onto his left hip. He's had pain ever since, and now comes to his orthopedic surgeon for an MRI. And on this view, we see the round ball, the femoral head. It looks just perfect. Nice and round. There's no spurring or erosion, no arthritis at all, and at 71 years old, which is amazing. This is his acetabulum, part of the ilium. It forms the cup that the round femoral head rotates in. There's a little black triangle around the rim of that cup called the labrum. And here in the front, the labrum looks good, that little black triangle. As we go to the middle, we see a little bit of bright signal along the undersurface and also a little bit of bright um, signal or increased signal, we call it, in the acetabulum within the bone. So it looks like you may either have a little bone bruise with some subtle increased signal in the overlying labrum from that injury or he just may have had a little tear through the base of the labrum, which is now scarred and hard to see, and a little bit of reactive marrow edema there adjacent to it. So probably a small labral tear. It's very hard to see labral tears when they're small and non-displaced, and over time they can scar and just become invisible. But this little bright signal, horizontal signal right there, may be some residual signal within a small focal tear. Sometimes cartilage the lines of joint can go up underneath the labrum and look very similar to this. So in cases like this, we're not sure. The orthopedic surgeon may go to a scope or we'll fill up with a contrast and do an arthrogram and just see if we um, see what the joint distended if contrast goes into a small tear. But labral tears can be very difficult. But that's not why I'm showing this case, since that's not very straightforward. He has a few other findings, several other findings, actually. And that's common to find multiple other things. He has a... A fluid collection over here in the front of the leg or front of the pelvis as we go down lower right here so this is an artery femoral artery and vein and there's a little band of brightness here this is the iliosoas bursa he's got a small bursal effusion there and if we look on this view we see something in the left groin this is the inguinal region there's again that artery vein behind it is that fluid the bursitis or bursal fluid and then in front of it, we see a collection of fat. This is a fat-containing hernia. This is peritoneal fat that's going down into the hernia defect. On the right side, you got the same thing, a fatty collection, a hernia defect. On the left, it just contains fat, so it looks very similar to the overlying fat. On the right, we see this little funny band in it. This is a loop of intestine that comes out through the hernia and goes down and curls upon itself. So this is the bottom. We can see the same finding if we go to another view, a larger field of view where we look straight at the patient. Uh, and also you'll note here this big prostate gland, another incidental finding. He's got a large heterogeneous signal intensity prostate gland that elevates the bladder floor. And this looks just like benign prostatic hypertrophy or BPH. Another incidental finding in this gentleman. Now we're going to look for that hernia. So if we go forward enough, we're going to see bilateral hernias. Here's one on the left. And again, the fat comes out of the peritoneal cavity and goes down into the inguinal region. And here's on the right side, this fat a collection. And then in the fat is a little loop of intestine there. This is where it goes in and comes out. So bilateral hernias, the right one contains a loop of intestine that's not strangulated. And then we have the bony marrow edema right here, maybe related to a bone bruise or sequelae of a small occult labral tear or a tiny labral tear over the top but interestingly, no joint effusion. And we have the big prostate gland. So a few findings, one last finding. If we go towards the back here, this is the right hamstring tendon origin. Hard to see on this view, it looks almost normal. But if we go to this view here and go up to the right spot, we see a little bit of brightness in the right hamstring tendon origin. Here's the left hamstring tendon origin looking normal. Here's the right hamstring, hamstring tendon origin with a bright uh, focus here. This is just a right hamstring tendinopathy or micro tearing there right at the attachment to the ischial tuberosity. And that's it. Here's that hernia defect again, and there's a loop of small intestine. And thank you very much.